It is difficult to talk to children about sex, right? But let's all admit it. For many of us, it is actually difficult to talk about sex with anyone, let alone children. But this inability to allow ourselves to be uncomfortable for a moment or two can potentially create lasting real world effects for our children. I'd like to invite you to imagine these scenarios with me. I've changed the names of people involved to protect their identities. Hi, Carl. He was at his grandmother's house during Raya. Um, this is an aid celebration. And all the children were uh, gathering around Uncle Joe, taking turns bouncing on Uncle Joe's knees. It was Haikal's turn, so Haikal sat on his Uncle Joe's lap and Uncle Joe moved his knees up and down, up and down, up and down, faster, faster, Haikal said. Him and his cousins were all laughing along with Uncle Joe. Going faster, Haikal realizes that both of Uncle Joe's hands were on Haikal's bum. Maybe, Haikal thought, to prevent me from falling because we were moving really fast. But Haikal feels uncomfortable. Everyone's laughing, so happy. And Haikal trusts his Uncle Joe. Should I tell my mom? She's right there. Mary, she is 14. She has been making out with her cute boyfriend who's 15 years old and his name is Jason. Um, she didn't really know what they were doing exactly, uh, but it sure felt good, nice. And one pleasure led to another. Now she finds out that she is pregnant. What will my mom say? Lina, she's 13. She has an Instagram account. She often posts selfies like any girl her age and her school friends always like them. She feels cute. She feels extra cute ever since a boy from another school been sliding into her DMs. He told her he is 14, so that's okay. They're about the same age. They exchanged flirty messages. He makes her feel really good about herself. She trusted him with um, some pictures of her not wearing any clothes because he said he loves them. In return, he gives her dick pics. They trust each other, and trust is important in a relationship. Turns out he is 20 years older than 14, married with two children. He wants to meet. Lena felt unsafe. But what about all those pictures? A 16-year-old girl, she was given alcohol and drugs at the end of a fun date. She's popular in school and she has so many admirers and she doesn't go out with any guys who doesn't pay for my dinner and drinks. Naturally, she gets a guy who pays for everything. But she didn't realize that it was his way of manipulating the situation into getting laid. Um, he's not a terrible kisser, but she just doesn't feel like doing anything more. How do I get out of this? Why am I wet if I don't want this? Will I be safe? I'm kind of high. Underage pregnancies, child sexual abuse, STI amongst children, unsafe abortions, gender-based violence, dating violence, forced intercourse, bullying, psychological abuse that leads to poor emotional and mental health, and potentially death from HPV and HIV-related complications. Lasting real-world effects for our children. Have you heard this proverb? Prevention is better than cure. I think it's fair to assume that most people have heard of it. 
I first realized the extent of the issues surrounding um, children's sexuality education here in Malaysia when I was a student in University of Malaya. I was volunteering as a, 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 an enumerator. My given task was to interview some 50 um, families about their health status to collect information on diseases among urban communities, gathering information for medical doctors and researchers. From that experience, I realized that children in urban housing are extremely vulnerable to predators and abusers because they were often left alone and unsupervised for long periods of time. Often because their parents have no choice, they have to work long hours to put food on the table. Here, I discovered a lack of awareness of how dangerous the family's outlook on the topic of sex and sexuality was. This outlook has unfortunately helped to perpetuate the practice of child marriage as a legitimate solution to sexual impropriety. It has also perpetuated the practices of baby dumping and infanticide, practices that bear unspeakable personal costs. I feel so sad and so angry every time I read about it in the news. You know, when people talk about babies who were planned, intended and wanted, generally, they'll be happy. They'll be content. Yet I was seeing families torn apart, young people distraught. It was just so upsetting. I've, I've had enough of um, baby dumping cases. I've had enough of infanticide cases happening in my country. And I definitely have had enough of young mothers, girls being demonized, blamed and punished while their partners are spared this kind of judgment. I came to realize that there was a direct correlation between what we were seeing in our communities and what we were not teaching our children. Baby dumping is the direct result of lack of sexuality education, not social problems, and certainly not because of a female child behavioral issue. In Malaysia, one in three young people said that their first sexual experience was before the age of 14. That's very young. One in three young people actually believe that they will not get pregnant from having sex just one time. One in five actually believe that they can get STI through a mosquito bite. 14 out of every 1,000 girls in Malaysia fall pregnant every year. 45 teenage girls give birth every day. In Malaysia, rapists often avoid prosecution by marrying their victims. Statistics suggest that at least 100,000 women have been raped by their intimate partner during their lifetime. Marital rape is not considered a crime in our country, for those who don't know. Malaysia is one of the 28 countries who still have marital rape exemption laws. So what can we do? What can we do to prevent all these tragedies? We engage our children in comprehensive sexuality education. Comprehensive sexuality education is a lifelong conversation which starts with simple concepts and builds over time as the individual's capacity to understand increases. It begins with laying the foundations with young children by teaching them about bodily autonomy, saying no to things that makes them feel uncomfortable, and how to differentiate safe touches and unsafe touches what's healthy behavior and what is toxic for them. That when a little girl or a little boy bullies you, pushes you, pulls your hair, it doesn't mean that they fancy you. When someone treats you unkindly, it does not equate to love or care. That it is never okay for someone to pressure, for anyone to pressure them to show their bodies if they don't want to. And that the only people 
who get to tell them what to do with their body for health and safety reasons. It's you, any caregivers you name, and also a doctor at the doctor's office when you are present with them. Talk about boundaries. Talk about personal safety. Make sure that they know that their body is theirs and theirs alone and no one else's. Create that degree of openness and respect for conversations about their bodies. I found it spot to provide comprehensive sexuality education to help parents and teachers initiate respectful conversations around topics of sex and sexuality in order to help prevent child sexual abuse, reduce unsafe sex practices amongst children, and help prevent child marriages. To do this, as volunteers, we go into schools and we talk to students from the age of nine. We talk to them about the definition of sex, what safe sex is, pregnancy, contraception, STIs. We also talk about sexual behaviors, focusing on bodily integrity, responsibilities, boundaries, consent, and their rights and laws around consent and sex. This is also aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 3, 4, and 5, which are good health and well-being, quality education, and gender equality directly. Since we started in 2015, our CSE modules have been delivered to more than 10,000 girls in 79 schools across six states. Talking about sex in a comprehensive manner has many positive effects, including delayed initiation of sexual intercourse, um, reduce risk-taking behaviors, and increased use of condoms and other forms of contraception. We can't always protect our children from the internet. We can't always protect them when they're not with us. And in Haikal's case, even when they are in our sight. Therefore, the only way we can protect them and truly preserve their innocence is by informing them, by empowering them with knowledge. This is how we create meaningful change. We're all born as sensual creatures. We need to educate our children before it turns sexual. Adolescence is a great time to build healthy habits and lifestyle relating to sex because it's a period of ongoing physical, emotional and social change. Addressing sexual development and puberty at the age of um, 10 and 11 helps adolescents to explore their own sexuality safely and develop strong, healthy relationships outside family. This is what SPOT aims to achieve. It is difficult to talk to children about sex and yet we know that it is so important and we know that we must do it. We need to educate ourselves on how to talk about sex in a positive light, with love, with kindness, with compassion. We need to remove the shame, remove the stigma around talking about it as our children's futures depend on it. Thank you.